This is Math 141. We are looking at section 4.2, which is the natural base. Um, so we've been talking about exponential functions, and, and the base, you know, is the part that's taken to the power. So like in this case, the base is 3, or in this case, the, the base is uh, 2.9. Now the natural base is... Um, is a it's a constant it's a number like pi you know how how pi we use this symbol to be an approximation for 3.14159 blah 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 and and that comes from if you take the circumference of a circle the distance around the outside and divide by the diameter of any circle you get pi and we use pi as the symbol for it because um we can't write it as a fraction it's it's irrational this this ratio this divided by that is, is um, a number that goes on forever and ever, never repeats itself. But it's about three. Now the natural base, uh, the symbol that we use for it is E. And again, E is just a number. And I'm gonna look at my calculator. It's actually in two different places on my calculator and they both involve um, using the second button. So if you look right up above division, there's E. So E, the number, is about that. Now it looks like it starts to repeat itself, 1828, 1828, but it doesn't. After this, it, it this pattern doesn't keep going on. Um, it's also here, just to the left of four, there's this ln button, which is actually the natural log. e to the x is another button we have on here. So that brings in e, but automatically puts it to a power. And if I put it to the first power, it's just e. So I'm going to say it's about 2.718. So it's called the natural base. And uh, it's called the natural base because it seems to pop up um, in exponential growth problems. It's, it's kind of like, in a sense, you could think of it as almost a, a maximizer, like optimal growth. We can, we can base it on E. And so let me show you one place where we could, we could talk about E. So last time we talked about uh, compounding interest, something that compounds annually, not annually, like semi-annually or quarterly or, or whatever. And um, our formula for that was uh, the principal times one plus the rate divided by the number of compoundings to the power of the number of compoundings times t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a thousand dollars. No, I'm not. I'm going to take a million dollars. And uh, I'm going to give us a hundred percent return on it not too bad um so and we'll just let it be there for one year so if i i'll say my number of compoundings and my value so if i let this compound uh just for one year and just one compounding in other words i get 100 percent once at the end of the year uh, that value will double so that would be worth $2 million. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to increase this number of compoundings and see what happens to this value. So how about if I compound it semi-annually? Well, I'm going to do that on my calculator. So a million is 10 to the sixth. And then I'm going to say one plus, my rate is 100%, which is one. And then I'm going to divide that by my number of compoundings, which is 2. And then I'm going to take that to the power of 2, 2 compoundings in one year. So that would be times 1. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about the times 1 because that doesn't change the value. So notice it gives me uh, this value right here. That's a bit more money. So here I just compounded it once, 100% at the end of the year. Here I compounded it half of that, so 50% halfway through the year, and then 50% again at the end of the year. And notice I got $225,000 more. Nice. So how about let's keep doing this. So I'm going to compound it 
quarterly, four times a year. So remember what happens with that is um, the rate gets split into four, so it would be 25%, but it'll happen four times in the year. And I get a, a bit more. So notice that just when I went from one to two, it increased by 225,000. When I went from two to four, that's a bigger jump in my number of compoundings. It went up by about maybe a little less than 220,000. All right, let's do it monthly. So 12 times. So in the year, I will get um, a 12th of the interest but I'll get it 12 times so notice my interest is decreasing as my number of compoundings is increasing so there has there I don't know if there has to be it seems like there might be some sort of uh, balance here or, or some something comes out something should come out in such a way that uh, Either this is decreasing too fast or this is increasing too fast. So let's see what happens. We'll keep doing this. All right, 4 to 12, that's a big jump. That's a jump of 8, you know, more than doubled. And then I didn't even get 200,000 out of it this time. So notice that my number of compounding is making bigger, bigger jumps but my total value at the end is decreasing. So as this is increasing, this is decreasing. Um, let's do it, let's do it daily. Let's do it every day, 365 days. So again, what happens is the year gets split up into 365 pieces. We are going to um, get that fraction of the interest. So we get 100, percent divided by 365, but it happens 365 times. And notice that's a big jump from 12 to 365. And I hate to say only, but we only got $100,000 more out of it. And I only say only because when we just went from one to two, we got $225,000, more than twice this change. That's interesting. So I could just keep doing this, right? I could make this change by the day, basically 365 times 24 and see, see what happens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 365 times uh, 24, uh, not by the day, sorry, by the hour. So that's how many hours there are. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to store that in X. And I then, when I go back to edit this thing, I'm not going to have to type in the number in a couple different places. I'll just change it to an X. So I'm going to get one 8,760th of the interest, but I'm going to get it 8,700. 60 times. Two, seven, one, eight, one, two, six, sixty nine. It's slowing down quite a bit, right? Like this is this was almost nine thousand, this value right here, and not even a thousand dollar increase. Well, let's let's just make it compound a bunch of times. Um, let's make it go fast. Let's make it compound a million times. It'll compound a million times in the year. But what that means is we only get one one millionth of the interest. So the amount of interest we're getting is tiny. Oh, I'm going to store that in X. The amount of interest that we're getting is tiny, but we're getting it a bunch of times. Like we're getting it compounded 
we're getting that multiplication a bunch of, bunch of times. And that is not very much of an increase. And I'm going to round that up to 47 cents if you're keeping track at home. So just from, remember, this was about 9,000 to a million compoundings. I get maybe 160, 155 more bucks around. So this is definitely slowing down. So if I think of this as a, as a graph, as my number of compoundings increases, my value goes up too, but it starts to cap out somewhere. You know what I mean? It's, it's an asymptote. It's asymptotic. So the rate at which it's growing slows down and it is going to approach somewhere, but never get there. And where is that? Well, remember we multiplied this by a million, right? So if I forget about multiplying this by a million, I just have a decimal point right here. Just have a decimal point right here. And notice what I have is about E. Again, multiply by a million and see how I got there pretty quick, and if it's not close enough, I would keep going. So here's what here's what we're doing. We're letting the number of compoundings get faster and faster and faster, grow, 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 grow. And as we do that, the value increases, but it starts to settle down to a spot and that spot is E. Notice how if the only thing we change in this situation is the number of compoundings, the fastest we can get it to grow has to do with E. Um, and there's our there's our E right there. So there's again there's a couple ways uh, several ways to think about E, but this is this is a nice convenient one that connects to exponential growth. That one of the definitions is the limit as x approaches infinity so let x get really big of and notice we're just grabbing this part right here one plus one over and instead of x i'll use n just because i used it here n to the power of n so as n gets really big this fraction gets really small but this exponent gets really big this thing settles down to e gets closer and closer to it as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger now that gives us a powerful tool, which we will call continuous compounding. If you remember last time when we were talking about um, just compound interest, the interest stays the, the value stays the same for a while, and then when you compound it, it does a jump like this each time, right? Like if I compound it quarterly, there's a full year. It's this amount, this first amount for a while and then compounded at a quarter and then compounded at a quarter compounded at a quarter and then if we if we cut it up more the more compoundings we have we can make it grow a little bit faster over the year and even up one from there but what continuous compounding does is that lets us basically have our number compoundings approach infinity. So instead of these little discrete changes, it's always growing. And it's growing at e to the x. So my continuous compounding then is just my principal times e to the power of t. Pert. I want to take a quick look at a graph. Um, here's 2 to the x. Here's 3 to the x. So how about e to the x? Since it's about 2.7, it should be right between them, and it is. The other thing I want to point out is it's really easy for us to evaluate um, functions at e on the calculator. Um, and I'm going to use this button for it, this, the natural log one. So for example, if I uh, define a function f of x is e to the x. 
Um, if I wanted to evaluate f of 5, that's e to the fifth power. So I'm going to e to the fifth power. And so notice this button will bring in the uh, the exponent with it. That's why that button is there. Um, this button is just e. So if you wanted to use it, you did, and then you have to hit the caret button to get there. But either way, I'll get you there. Um, hey, real quick, what's e to the zero? Anything to the zeroth power is one. And we could go e to negative numbers too, right? And that would be some sort of decay. So expect that to be between zero and one. So $7,000 is invested at 6.9% for 15 years, and we're gonna let it compound continuously. So how much will it be worth? Uh, our principal is 7,000. It's compounded continuously, so we'll say e to the power of the rate. Remember for the rate, we're gonna put it as a decimal. Now the 100% is already in here. We don't have to go 1.069 in this case, it's just the rate. And then we're gonna multiply that by the time, which is 15. So $7,000 times e to the power of the rate, 0 0.069 <laughs> times the time. And it'll be worth about $20,000, not too bad. All right, the practice for this is a lot of problems like this. So remember, when we have continuous compounding, we use this formula. And when we have just uh, compounding that's not continuous, we use this one, rate divided by the number of compoundings, power of the number of compoundings, times the time. So all the variables are the same thing except the n isn't in, uh, isn't in the continuous compounding one. So give that work a try. Post any questions you have in the forums or message me.